Uh, we'll call them meeting to order. Young um, County Committee to meeting in a regular session. Uh, Tuesday, October 15th, 9.30 a.m. It was about 9.31. Um, I note that uh, notice has been given for the times in the matter. Um, provided for government code. Uh, all members of the court present. Big meetings, please stand. Education, please. That's great. Dear and Father, we just ask you to be with us this morning. God direct us as we conduct business and let our county, let our community. Father, we just give you praise for the recent ranks that we have. And we just ask you to continue those ranks to fill our tanks, to fill our lakes, to heal our lands. Father, we just ask you to be with us and, and uh, give us good health so we may go about and uh, serve you and uh, work your will in our lives. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. I'm honored to the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one, and indivisible. Thank you, please be seated. Thank you. 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 Thank Notice uh, regarding Bradley's G Water Planning Group. They're meeting a member to fill their voting membership board. I believe that uh, interest is industries. And that stretches from here a long way south. If anybody knows someone that might be interested in that, it would be qualified. I've got the information application of things in my office. Okay, you saw in your pack also a notice of Boy Scouts of American Northwest Council time here today. It's going to be difficult to I believe, in November. I think there's an item on the agenda with regard to that. If any of you know, Bill Michael Haney, kind of good at the Wise County. It's about him passed away yesterday in a court meeting. Bill's a good, good fellow. Quite a compliment to people. Our thoughts are with him and his family. Is there any other announcements that might need to be made? No. I'll make one announcement. Uh, Commissioner Wiley, Saps, Commissioner Saps, and I attended the uh, conference, state conference, this past week. And uh, after many miles, lots of flash one time, engine Wiley are certified county commissioners. Did you read to get your receipt for your curriculum thing about you get a resume? Congratulations. Certificate. Part of work paid out. Congratulations, gentlemen. You say what? Yeah, you pass you pass them out if you want a milestone, mate. Yes, it is. Good education put forth by the folks down there. That's a good conference. Appreciate everybody sending us down there. It was a long way, Gals. It will work. It really is. It's a lot cheaper than you. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations to them for the safe their phone. Great sight. Do you have anything to 
But I guess this is all good, you know, the energy. Yeah, uh, let's move on by four. I think uh, that will be the county clerk's meetings, previous meetings, September the 23rd, 2013. Uh, if there are any, um, are there any corrections, deletions, or modifications? <laughs> Security pledge update. One million nine hundred and thirty-two thousand four hundred sixty-two forty-seven. Is that open up? Open up. Is that all good? Any other items? Any other items? Motion by Commissioner Wiley, second by Commissioner Brewer to accept the post pledge as presented. All favor? Aye. Okay, I think our officer is leaving. Get her out of the way once you can get on the way. I've got them already. <laughs> okay. We're going to go to the clerk. Please. That next one's fine. Yeah. Uh, budget amendments. Yes, I fixed up the budget amendment. We talked about uh, taking it out of 13 out of contingency to other equipment in the Sheriff's Department for those uh, cameras and vehicles. Uh, it, actually, the invoice came in a little bit cheaper. It's um, 23580 374. So moved. Thank you. So we have a motion by Commissioner Wiley and the second by Commissioner Bruce to move the applicable, applicable amount of contingency to the Sheriff's Department <coughs> Office equipment repair fund for. System. No, this the is the uh, this is the radio. Oh, radio. Yes. Okay. Like I said, that I think that bid was like twenty four six eight or something. But anyway, I had the bid there. Okay. But the, yeah, those the, cam those the cameras. These are the cameras. Yeah, that yeah. 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 I thought that's what you said. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 All in favor? Aye. Most of the 
it's just the difference in price. It used to be $50 a person, so it's come down. Yeah. Do we really need both of them? It, it yeah, because on. you don't know which one's going to pick you up. You don't know where you're at. That's definitely the whole deal. And also, the airy bag, the, they'll charge $5. So you're saying day. when people buy this from one, one or the other companies, they may not be getting benefit from it because the other one may show up on their mail. You cover from both directions. I know we don't cover because we're spending yeah. good money doing it. I'm talking about. Every bank doesn't tell people you need to buy care flights too. No. no. But we did this um, to help them on our medical insurance because with this coverage, it our medical insurance doesn't have to pay anything. But it would if we didn't have it? Yes. They don't do that anymore. They dropped that. Yeah, we need to be more careful. How many care pots have we had in the past year, sir? Oh, in this year? We've had some, haven't we? This year? I think they had two. Two. So that little amount. If you, had, if, if you had one, it cost you an average of $18,000, I think, for a trip. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, we got you. Did we get one from Care Yeah. I didn't hear one. No, I didn't. Did we get one? You did. You may second it? Okay, somebody needs to second it. Mr. Wiley, second by Mr. Bruce, <coughs> to uh, renew the uh, membership of Care Flight and uh, area back for, to extend. Okay, consider Pitney Bowes Global Financial Services Agreement. Hey, right now we have the Pitney Bowes mail machine that's down by the tax assessor's office and all the courthouse, the uh, jail, the sheriff's department, everybody uses it. Our contract with them runs out um, early next year. But he came to Nancy and I to talk to us. If they have a bigger, nicer, newer machine that'll do, it'll do more. It'll save us some money in our certifies because the way it's handled. And uh, so he worked up a contract, and actually it's like thirty dollars. We pay by quarter, and it's thirty dollars less a quarter than what we're paying on this other machine. It's a uh, sixty-month contract. And quarterly, we're, we're charged $1,998 for paying, I think $2,028. So, we might run it too. We've always had the 50 bows. We have any trouble, they're down here to fix it. We don't have any problems. So that extends their contract for over 60 months. There's a way out of the contract. Well, since it's the same ones, he said we can do this if there okay. is one. Second. They'll go ahead and bring it in. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Wiley, second by Commissioner Sipes. Yes, sir. We renew our contract service agreement for 50 votes for mail machine services. All favor? Okay, our lease agreement, uh, item number 10, American National Lease for pickup for the district of use. Um, after much controversy and checking bid quotes, and y'all just, you know, but anyway, um, what he had bid us on the Dodge pickup was not comparable to what he bid us on the Ford. It was the quad, not the crew. So we ended up going with a Ford. F-150 Super Frame, uh, got the cover and the running boards and the bed mat from Rock and Elm. And 
total with pick up and all the accessories is $25,368.50. Um, we're paying $4,000 down that we put in the DA's budget this year. And I told Stuart that this is going to be, you know, they're not going to use it that much, so it's going to be a pretty low mileage. So we went ahead and went out four years on the lease to pay $4,000 for the next four years. Um, and at the end of that lease, we said there's about eight full periods open on it. We can trade it in, pay it off, keep the big difference of use in the precinct for whatever we want to do. What's that? $4,000 a year. I took this year's budget. Yes, I've got that paper ready to go to. Okay, so we're going to have to have an opportunity to make a drive by now. We voted to get one into Lisa. And I thought I would do that. I've got all the responses. Okay, uh, <coughs> wrap by Lisa Green. Okay, well, motion of Mr. Wally, second of Mr. Rogers to ratify the lease agreement with the American National Leasing Service for the district attorney to speak it all over. Uh, I agree. All in favor. Council Lane. She does, yeah. Well, sometimes it's my show. It's your show. Yeah, we're next year. Y'all will turn you into the feed and see that. Four or five, five pages. It's like a letter. It's hard to let it in on the top of it. It'll be page one on the bottom of it. Thank you. I'm just briefly in the middle paragraph. It says, in our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects the respective financial position of the governmental activities, each major fund and an aggregate remaining fund information. So, John County, as of September 30th, 2012, and the respective changes in financial position for the year ended in conformity with the county council chairman said the United States of America. What all that says is that respect these financial statements, they won't mislead you if they're purely correct for any decisions you'd like to make wrong and so forth. We find them to be, to be correct and answer the correct statements in all material statements. These are as of September 30th, 2012. You flip over probably two or three pages, they'll actually. Five, over on page five. This is the MDNA. This is an actual financial statement per se. We'll get into that in a second, but I just wanted to show you that if you want to look and see a comparison, that the uh, the balance sheet or whatever the net assets is on page five, and the uh, statement of activities starts on page six, and that gives you a comparison of 2012 to 2011. In, in round numbers. As you can see, just glancing down through there, we're going to go through this in detail. We're going to look at more of the page, but they're very consistent. There's going to be large changes from one year to the next. A few, a few small ones. And this drill page six. If you go on over to page nine, and by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to stop me and ask me whatever. Uh, over on page 9 is our statement of net assets for September 30, 2012. And this gives you a full accrual look. We, we have two of these. We have balance sheets and statement of assets. This is full accrual. And by that, it drops in all your assets and fixed assets, like land, buildings, and those things, with depreciation right now. And it also lists uh, your long term debt. You can see it there uh, at the beginning, you know, there's cash and then CDs. That, those two added together, to about $6,799,000. And, and uh, 
some smaller items through there, and then you get down to the land buildings, improvements, machinery, equipment, and accumulated depreciation. If you net all those together, there's about nineteen million dollars there. And then on down in the bottom section is your liabilities. Heads up, September thirtieth, twelve. And the two big items down there is capital leases, and you have a current period and the long-term period of capital leases. The current period is 243,796. That means the capital saving in 2013. And then the long-term period was 1,037,644. If you add those two together, you come to 1,281,440. That's your total capital leases outstanding in September 30, 2012. Same thing is true of your bonds. There's a current period of 500,000, and then a long term period of 6,680, 6, and the total of that would be 7 million 180. Now, y'all made the payments on the end, so it's 500,000 less. I want you to be aware of what was out there at that point. The uh, bottom fund balance down there, net assets, you can see the Six million five sixty two six oh three. That's the amount as of September thirtieth that wasn't committed to anything that was free for y'all to spend to use and put in your budget and so forth. The next five, again we're talking full approval here on this one. A two. Down at the third line from the bottom is your changes in net assets. If you can read that, it's $994,386. That was the increase for 2012, the year into 2012. That after you did all your revenue and all your expenditures and everything was true, you came out to the good $994,000. Yeah. That's a good thing. The expenses are pretty consistent with prior years and pretty consistent with your budget. I don't know if you go through those in detail unless you have questions. Uh, over on page 11, this is the modified rule site. And this is your balance sheet without all the fixed assets, without all of the uh, debt put in there. And you can see down there, second line from the bottom in the uh, modified rule. Financial statements. You had a total fund balance for the general fund of five million nine thirteen. For all other funds, of eight oh six, and the total of six million seven twenty available for operations. Page twelve. Um, I'm not going to go over this much. This is just a reconciliation between the fund balance of your full approval and your modified approval. And all the differences you can see there at the top line that I've added the 19 million for the land and the building and all that. Took out the 7 million I made for bonds, all of that. And that gets you, you know, if you get to wondering, well, what's the difference between the two financial statements? This, this gets you there. Page 13. This is your modified payment of activity, your revenues, expenditures less uh, revenue, less expenditures, and any other changes like transfers and so forth. Uh, this is on modified approval again, so you don't have depreciation and so forth in here. Uh, anyway, the bottom line on this net change in fund balance over on the right, third line from the bottom, is the 824,611. It's a little bit different, but not much. So again, a real good report. The next page is just a reconciliation between the state of activities and the state of revenues and expenditures. Uh, and it just tells us what the difference is between the full approval and the modified approval. We drop on back, I want to get a couple of footnotes. Over on page 22. I kind of wonder what we've done with capital assets in general. On page 22 at the bottom under footnote D, it gives you the beginning balances for the year ending 12. I mean, 
picks up their target in the cloud and then it gives you all your increases and decreases for um, any, any equipment you got rid of, plus anything that you have accumulated depreciation and so forth. And you wind up with an ending balance of you know, 19 billion is your ending balance. So it ties back over to the front page, page one. The next page does the same thing for your long term obligations. Go so from page 23. The top portion up there is your capital leases. And you can see you started with 866000 you wound up at the end of the year with the D281 capital leases. Bonds payable, you started with 7,680, you wound up with 7,820. So total debt, you wound up with 8,461,000. Outstanding. The majority of that, of course, is your bonds. And then right below that is the debt service requirements for the next few years for the bonds and the uh, Capital leases. And also, I wanted to mention on your pension fund, on page 25, is the continuation of the pension fund footnote. In the middle there, uh, the, well, it's actually the fourth little paragraph there. It says for the employer's account year ended December 31st, 2012, the annual pension cost for the TCBRS plan for its employees was $3,221,836. And after payment of contribution, it was exactly the same. So you pay what, you, what they required you to pay. It is what I want to point out. And then over on page 26. That's at the end of 12, 31, 11. And that top paragraph up there, the third line with the numbers in it, you can see that you have funded ratio of 87%, 87.06%. That's at the end of 11. So you're pretty well funded on the rest of that. You know, it's funded every time it goes on, it doesn't earn from the bank. Go back to page 30, the report that we have to put in here. We don't do enough work, and we're not required to do enough work when it comes to control and compliance to issue an opinion, but we do test in terms of control and compliance. And over on page 30, uh, right above where it says compliance and other matters, that very last sentence of that paragraph says we did not identify any deficiencies in the internal control of the financial reporting that we consider to be material weaknesses of the that's defined above. We do test some internal controls. We have to test enough to understand what's going on and, and how our tests are to go. And uh, the ones we looked at didn't show any material weaknesses. So it's, uh, compliance is the same way over on page 31. Your compliance with like bond agreements, those types of things, we have those as well. And the first paragraph of the very last sentence results of our test disclose no instances of non compliance or other matters that are required to be reported in the office. And then, two pay well, let's go ahead and look at 32. That's our report on any findings, questions, calls. You can see over there that we everything is X and O, but we didn't find anything. We didn't find any uh, material weaknesses. We didn't find any significant deficiencies. There's no findings. And then the very last thing, over on page 33, you know, we had a finding last year, and uh, we examined what we had recommended and what the county had recommended. Down in front of us, and we're reporting now after reviewing those situations that uh, all of those recommendations have been fully Very good audit. Any questions?
decides the second vote Mr. Wiley to waive rule number four and we'll go over that and find sound for October 27th, the Grand Church of God activity. All in favor? Aye. Carried. Okay, road across the permit. Uh, that's an uh, application of target resources on the Carmack Road. I thought I, I spoke with him on the application. I asked if they were going to board cuts. I said they were going to cut. What would be? I don't have any money. Okay. You don't have any. I don't have any objections. No objection. Harvey's always said some of things. We have the application, we have the math, all the references that we have in the funds. Funds check number here. Okay. I will second that motion. Motion by Commissioner Pruitt, second by Commissioner Sides. The uh, application permit from the road crossing from Carmack Road to Harbor Resources uh, as indicated in the application. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Which one was this wrong? I thought we were going to discuss and redoing that one time. Well, application. we've got a, yeah, we discussed that a little bit uh, to uh, make, make provisions for uh, somebody to request a waiver of that fee. Right. Okay. I had that on that meeting with this gym and got some concrete in my head. did. Okay. Push some of it back. Maybe but it'll be on the next one. That's fine. Go work. Uh, Sheriff, is there anything you need to address before we move on to recess here for just a minute? No, I'm good. Okay. Recess. Get me. Okay, let's call the meeting back to order. Uh, item number 18. It's uh, time for our nominee for the Young County Project District. That happens every, every odd number of years. I'm currently on the tax appraisal board. Is, uh, our, our representative is Mr. Craig. I made contact with Mr. Craig. He gave his willingness to do that another time. Um, does anybody else have any, have any other nominations? We'll submit our nomination to Luke, to the Chief Appraiser. I think there's been some entities that have, have been able to meet to get that their nominate to him. Actually, we have a the ability to nominate for each one of the positions as all the other voting uh, nominees do. But historically, we have just submitted a nominee for our tax entity as the other taxing entities have. So we go as it is. Uh, can I ask a question? Being, being first timer on the board, what what generally are the qualifications for that individual to sit on that board? Represents uh, be I believe that you have to be a, a resident of the county for five years, if I recall right, and be a um, tax paying citizen, like on the tax road. So just nothing out of the ordinary. I think he, I believe he just served one time. So that, that's right. The hospital districts do not have a representative on there. They don't, they don't, they're not um, entitled to votes. Um, 
that's interesting. Conservation Commission kept yeah. doing on some some instances where they're not investing. Okay. 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 That needs to be done by resolution. We'll make the resolution package. Jack. I'll entertain a motion to renominate. I so moved. We have a vote by Commissioner Sipes, a second by Commissioner Wiley to uh, renominate. Um, Board of K. Greg is our representative uh, for the Young County Tax Appraisal Board. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Deborah, uh, you'll have the original, so we'll just fill that out. It needs to be signed by the. Before everybody leaves, it needs to be signed off. <coughs> Any Update on the formation of certs. There's two, two and three. That, that fits to That's an activity. There are a lot of different things in it. For an application for 1747 grand money, Mr. Mike Sides. Yes, sir. Um, our trip to Galveston is predicated on the fact that we will be receiving updated information on the SB 1747 county road grant money that was proposed in the last legislature. Um, I think they are setting out the final rules as of today, I believe. We're having a hearing. Um, <clears throat> it was very informative, and many of the attendees of that conference were there for this specific thing. And in order to give you a little perspective of what is occurring here, I have two handouts from a couple of vendors at the show this one is LJA Engineering Firm was there and uh, Grant Works were both had both had uh, <coughs> booths there and their pitch was that <coughs> this was such a complicated formula and that in order for us to maximize the amount of money we were going to get from the state that we should consider involving them in the application process so that they could do some of the more professional work that they considered needed to be done. Um, I visited the lady at Grant Works and asked her what that would cost. And she stated that it would be a percentage of what we received. We're not knowing how much we're going to receive. So Grant Works. Uh, Austin, Alpine, Beeville, Dallas, Houston, Abilene's not listed in the city of the uh, <clears throat> Aurelia Cardenas, Cardenas was the one I talked to there. She was quite emphatic that the county is simply were making an error and not by a professional organization to look out for their interests. Uh, Getting back to my story, she said it would be a percentage of what we got. So obviously, if we have a 20% in-kind match on this grant, and they charged us 10, 15, whatever percent, that would increase or decrease the amount of money we got and increase the amount of in-kind contribution we would have. Um, I asked her, I said, surely the legislature would not create a program whereby they knew that outside interest could step into the middle of the flow of money and get grab a hold of it as it came by on its way from Austin to the counties. She said, well, it is government. I said, well, I've heard different stories from Austin, and we will just simply wait and find out. Uh, Jim Allison had a very good panel up there, and we discussed this. Tech stock is doing most of the legwork for the counties so far as the numbers in those categories by which we will receive money and they will notify us as to how much of that money this county is proportionally willing or going to get okay that we're we are every all 254 counties will be entitled to some 
some obviously more than others. 90% of them will probably the one receives them. Right. And, and some of them will receive such a small amount that they probably will not go to the trouble of, of forming this CETRZ, certain terms or whatever they call it, which is a uh, county energy transportation reinvestment zone. Um, TAC and TxDOT are going to provide us all the necessary templates, paperwork. I think y'all all got this handout that Mr. Wiley brought back. It's the notice of public hearing. It is the establishment of the investment zone, reinvestment zone that we need. And I, Jim also said that they would be having some workshops to go through this. Where we need to make certain that we understand is that we need to understand this reinvestment zone and its tax consequences to the county, which should be not put a burden on it. This, as I understand it, and this understanding may change as I, as I get into it a little more, our in-kind money has to be dedicated to a particular set of projects. And the state needs to know that when we say we're going to use that money for the project, that it's secured in a manner that it will be. So that money is going to go into this TRZ. And it will go in there established as a percentage of our overall tax rate into this tax zone. So we're not taking money necessarily out of, the, out of our taxes to fund this tax zone, but there will be a tax rate afforded this tax zone. And that's the way I understand it at current times. And we're going to have some other. Go ahead. That doesn't affect your, your uh, rate. No. Your uh, rollback or anything else. This doesn't affect any part of that. So that's great. We'll think about this. They assure us of that. Of course, we need to watch it. Um, I talked with, uh, matter of fact, Representative Springer called me yesterday wanted an update on what we learned here. He was going to be in Austin today at that hearing to find more out for us. He said most of his smaller rural counties that he had discussed this with were going to make the county their reinvestment zone. There was a gentleman in the panel who lives in a larger, more populated county, maybe a little more oil activity, that was considering using the precinct boundaries as those zones. So we will need to decide as a group what is going to be best for our county and for our taxpayers when we do this. Or the, the county elders have more than one reinvestment zone? Yes. You can set up as many reinvestment zones as you want. Uh, herein, herein lies the problem. It's not a problem anytime you get some of your money back from the state. It's, good. it's a good situation. We've been asked to find as many projects as we can find in the county. So don't be shy about coming up with projects for this. Uh, TAC. I think believes that if there's an overwhelming amount of road repair that needs to be done, we'll have better luck in successive legislative sessions of getting more of this money sent down to the county's hand. That being said, that if we only qualify for, say, I think you suggested one time forty or fifty thousand dollars. I, I understand, and, and, and you know, swag method does work at times, but we need something just to go off of as an example. If we had to come up with 20% of, of the money we receive or the money that we're going to be out on the project, the money that you receive. Okay, so it would be $8,000, but say our most minimal project is Commissioner Rogers just did what, three, four miles of road at $108,000. Yeah, that $40,000 is not going to do a large project. And where in the county would we decide to spend that? It's going to mean a large amount of cooperation among all of us here at this table to make sure that, that money gets applied properly. But we still need to use that money for the benefit of the roads in the county. So we would get $40,000, say, minus 20% on a group of projects that may total $600,000. The application, that's our problem once it gets to us. We've got to get the money first. The counties that do not apply for that money, that money will go proportionally to the counties that do apply. Okay, so there won't be any leftover money. All that $225 million 
is going to be passed out. Uh, our representative is is fairly unsettled about the fact that it's this whole thing has been skewed toward the Eagleford gas play, and that his county, as he feels, has been abused by the whole field, not abused, but used by the whole field for a great many more years than that play currently is down there. And so he is going to do what he can to get as much money here for us as possible. Uh, the problem here is the new well completion number is obviously the big number that will skew things to the south. So that is where the uh, TRZ is at the moment. We've got some time to, uh, I know they'll start taking applications sometime in the middle of January. I don't know when they'll close the application process. But if they are already, if they're allocating it to us beforehand, I don't think it's a race to the courthouse for, for the money. It's just uh, make sure you apply for it before your deadline to make sure that you get your part. So okay. that's what we're standing on. I have to count half <coughs> house and bass want to put together the proper farm to just part of them. Yes. They take the end of that out. That, that's on front and back. The, the key thing is, is our annual road report. Now our annual road report that we have, there's not much room on there it's pretty basic. But he said, thank you, three, four, five sheets extra. He said, wherever else you want to put on there, but go through all your, your precinct roads. Check them all out. Put down the projects you need. And if you have a bridge or anything like that, even though it may be up for deal, the mistakes, you can go in there and don't do it just to be on the safe side. Anything that's weak, go little bearing or whatever. <clears throat> but uh, that's one of the most important things is the road report, and it's just required. And the road report must state the reason for the damage to the road. Yes. And obviously, our reason for that will be overweight old field trucks. I'm going to be in my The damage? It's bad. So that is the state of the SB 1747 grant. Uh, where are we? Time, time frame. Time frame is we probably need to know something by the next meeting. We will know something by the next meeting. We probably need to act some way to set a public hearing on that. I think that's been changed to 30 days? 37 days. 37 days is the shortest period of time you have, that you've got. Yeah. Once again, that's to the time they start collecting applications. So we've got a little more time with that. And there's a on the back of this, and it gives you notice to the public hearing in the back. Uh, according to the percent of the code there, the transportation code. So we need to publish 37 days before the hearing. The director of the court made 30 days after the closing of the public hearing takes appropriate action uh, on the matter of the commissioner of court. Made this discretion determined to be in the best interest of the county. So, you had to do that prior to do that. Application to know when the application was going to be due. They don't have that date for certain. Yeah, they for all. Right. The text out is doing a great deal of work. You consider 254 counties have to be given their proportionate share of this. And you get 254 counties. Divided by into two hundred twenty-five million dollars, you can see that that's, as we all know in our budgets, that's not a lot of road money. But we need to get what we our, our portion of it is. You know, it's our money. It's not like we're taking it from somebody else. It's our money. Okay. Prior to this date, has provided public notice by publication in the newspaper of general circulation in the county to be printed not less than seven days prior to the public hearing after conducting the said public hearing. That's another 222.107.1 the transportation code. The other thing is, is, is this energy transportation reinvestment zone has a, a, a uh, expiration date. But with that expiration date, you still have an, an option to add, what, five more years? Yes, you do. After the expiration date, it has a 10 year life and you can extend it for an additional five, five years. 
But to, to go full circle back to where we went with the offers of assistance for help, Jim Bass told us that he thinks that we're going to, any county's going to be able to do it without any outside assistance. That they will be there to do all, give us all the free help we need, and that it will be simple enough. It will be a task, but it won't be simple enough that we can accomplish it. I think once we, once they get the rules and regulations, and they get the dates when they're going to have each classes, we can attend those. Which is not what these engineering firms want to hear, or the grant writers want to hear. That's what we got. But this brand new question is all now supposed to include the city of and it nearly said it was out of it. It probably ought to get completely kind of get his opinion on some of that stuff and see what he might offer some advice to us. My last comment to uh, Representative Springer yesterday was would he please contact me as soon as he got back from Austin and give us a full update on what transpired down there. So we all need to get to be back So he's going to be back today. Okay. okay, we'll uh, discuss further this issue on uh, our next meeting. Next meeting, yes, sir. Got that, Amy? We'll have a discussion, uh, at least, maybe some consideration, I don't know, on the uh, establishment of the 17 grant uh, house bill is that 17? 1747. 1747. CD or SB. SB. 1747. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have that as my at least to discuss, and we may be taking action with him. Okay, our next item is uh, also a question from Commissioner Sykes, and that has to do with the uh, paper report regarding a possible lawsuit. Take away. No, let's go 20. Still 2020? Yes, sir. Oh, that's burned. Okay. Take a look at the lawsuit here, Take a look at the lawsuit, please. Discuss possible outside law firm, uh, no audit firm, to uh, audit county utilities for errors resulting in overpayments. This would include collection of these payments. That's also Mr. Sykes. Um, again, the uh, the trip to Galveston hopefully gets the uh, covers the trip down there by finding some positive notes out of this. Discuss the audit firm. The name is Tristem. I'm just passing some things down to you. Just passing down here. You know, this is the young lady that was uh, at that booth. What they do is do an independent audit of your utility bills, all your utility bills of any kind that you may have. And they they go back as far as we've got records for to do this. They look for Overpayments, overbillings, improper contract amounts, anything that they can find wrong on those contracts and billings that are in our favor. Because they take 49% of what they find. Okay? But the good news is that we have 51% of money that we don't know that we lost. If they don't find anything, they don't get anything. So obviously they're highly motivated to try to find something. They will do the collection, they will do the gathering of the money, and they will give us reports and pay for it. This includes telephone, electricity, and any other utility bills that we may, may have. Uh, they've got a great many clients. I asked them to contact Cheryl in the auditor's office and visit with her. Cheryl told me that she had a good conversation with this lady and she sees no downside to it. That if we have in the past Overpaid some utility bills, we will get some of it back. And in Texas, I think she told me that 
you can get money back from utilities as far back as you can find it. So if there's no time, so what do you lose? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Absolutely. You're, you're gaining. You know, absolutely. And there's no bad one of these audits one time in the many years past. Really? Is it time for no? Did we find anything then? Well, I think it was like a refund, but I can't remember what it was. Right. What's taxpayers' money if we can sell it back? We should have. It's free service, basically. That's no, it's, it's commission service. service. You say not to use something like that. It's been been like three years ago, probably. It's also things that maybe some of the phone companies up in the charging us that should be charging us. Mm -hmm. Fees that maybe the county not be paid. Cheryl has discussed this with the lady. She could be here on our next meeting to, to make a presentation to the court so that we can decide at that time whether this is something we want to pursue. But I did want to present it to the court because it's some way we can get some revenue and recoup some expense maybe that we weren't truly intended to be out. It would be a pleasure for the court to have that as an um, agenda item for our next meeting. I'd like, like to do that, sir, please. Can be here then. Yes, sir. She can be there then. You can be in opposition to that. I'm saying the court would like that an agenda item. Um, presentation from uh, uh, the Tristem. Tristem. Regarding you, Philip Dog. Okay. Now, I was pregnant here. Now, can I go there? Yes. I'm ready to go there. Okay. Item number 20, uh, 21. Um, Discuss the newspaper report. Yes, sir. Um, the newspaper has recently reported an incident that occurred, I believe, back in May at our, our jail. It's my understanding that as a commissioner, that's our responsibility for the liabilities that may occur in jail operations, as well as the building and keeping a safe environment for prisoners and as well as people who work there. Um, I just am questioning the fact that what I know about this case is what I read in the paper as a commissioner. And I just wondering, is there is there some way that the people who are responsible for that jail can be kept in the loop when something like this occurs? Because it is my responsibility as well as it is yours for that jail. And when my uh, constituents come to me Ask me, have you heard about what's going on? What's going on out the jail? I don't, I don't know. And uh, I feel like the newspaper was called in. How did, how did they get the story? They called in. The way I understand it, uh, of course, the story was reported uh, sometime shortly after the incident happened. Right, it was reported in the paper again. That's where I got most of the information I got at the time of the occurrence, was the newspaper's rendition of that story. This particular article, I think, mm -hmm. came out not too long ago. And we had no information or discussion about it at that time. It just kind of come through the paper and went by, and, and here we go on. And the next thing I know, lawsuit possible in jail this case. Okay. The reporter, Ms. Rushing, as I understand, uh, did whatever got on to it somewhere. Uh, uh, information with regard uh, to that. Uh, the attorney that had been retained by Mr. Simpson and contacted that attorney, and this story was a product of that interview. Of her discussion with the attorney? Of her discussion with the attorney. We have not been served. Right. I just been given notice of that possibility. For early on, early on it was turned over to our liability carrier, TAG. The auditor and I have had a 
contact the film a couple of times, but until something's filed, you know, I don't, I don't know what they, I don't have any information to give. Uh, is it possible that we might be notified with the same information that you're notified with through an email or a telephone call? That's possible. You know, there's a, there's an incident at the jail that you may need to be aware of. It's in the process, and here's what I know materially about it, and that's all I can tell you at this time. Well, let's so, hope no formal charges. No, there's been a formal file. We, we have been started on one incident. I was trying to pick up the Yes. has been served. And the county has been served on an incident with regard to a bail policy being uh, taken off of the list to run a bail. Should not the commissioner's court be notified of these things? Well, I think it'd be better if our At one point in time, that it came from our uh, liability carrier. You know, there's been a turning time assigned to that uh, incident as well as this one, this Simpson case for pre investigation services. Is there any one commissioner sitting at this table that's more liable for that jail than another? I can't answer that. I don't think that. Isn't it a five-man court that we're all responsible for what we do so far? You telling me that I'm withholding information from you? No. I've asked, is there a way that we might get more information when these kind of things occur? Well, it's a simple request. When I get the information to disseminate, uh, I will. If you want all of the information, that's all of the conversations that's take, taking place between uh, the auditor and attack myself and uh, all me get right yeah. here. You know, when we're when we're when we're served with a lawsuit, I think the rest of the commissioners deserve to know that. Okay. The, the suit that's been filed is uh, <clears throat> Cynthia Ann Poe versus uh, versus Young County Sheriff and Young County. Okay. That's the one that's been there that's that's us. Us. And that's all I ask that we do is to not make one individual have to be the, the point guard for all that when we all share the load of governing this county. Very well. And then I kind of, and I'm not saying it's bad, but I, I kind of see what he's saying because I had some an individual this morning tell me that there was possible five lawsuits going to be filed against Young County, and I'm like, huh? I had no idea what he's talking about. Felt like an idiot. So if you do know, it does help to at least be prepared for when it would ask you about something. Is there any more opinion? Is there any more opinion? Is there any more opinion? I just got some hearsay ones. I don't want to say it publicly. Well, that's, that's all we're getting is hearsay. I'm to get it directly. The threats of lawsuits. Right. The case here and uh, yeah, there's one of them where an inmate was injured by another inmate. Probably where medical calls for the broken leg. Wow. I just feel like we need to know this as commissioners of the young county because our responsibility lies. And I'm just asking that when that information comes to you through your office, that you disseminate it to the commissioners and you know, some sort of confidential, not necessarily discussion, because you know what good well that would mean is that prevents doing too much there. But if if, if I if I get information that I feel that is deserving, I, I will make certain that you all get it. And I think the department heads should be liable for telling us too. Sure. So, I mean, if I was being sued for something, I'd want to come to you guys. How do y'all I would think that the, the jail administrator should at least report, give us a report or something. We may need to ask to have a quarterly or monthly report from the judge. We need to know something like it. Right. And we need to and we need to do some visitations to our jail because we are responsible for it. Be safe, you know, keep it away from us. Well, I've kind of presumed that at some point in time 
was up in Lapface. It was up in Lapface Mall. Yes, well, uh, if uh, there would be uh, a uh, meeting probably uh, in closed session for our attorneys to give us a report on that. Of course, here's the thing. You remember the commissioner's court and you've got information, so the other four of us would like to have that same information. Okay. It's not necessarily my, <laughs> my being a member of the commissioner's court that comes to me as uh, the chief elected official, I guess, of the county more than it is. Does that make you? At some point in time, it would certainly be um, an item to bring to the court. Some form of fashion. Okay. Might cause problems. Yeah. Can't open for it. Right. Might cause less problems if if you didn't have to make that decision as to whether it's something you want to withhold from us or or give it to us. Okay. You know, because I don't know that there is a head commissioner at this table. You do preside over the meetings as such, but all of us have an equal vote. I was asked to disseminate the information. But you can't ask for information you don't know exists. And I'd like to say, I didn't know about any of this. I didn't know about the lawsuit until this. And, uh, well, the possibility that lawsuit came, um, you should have been aware of that, but when the first uh, article came out, like, well, I thought it was already filed. I didn't know it was not filed. I didn't know it been filed. Right. So then we don't really have one. But like, like you said, when we get called out in public, their hands now look silly. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> Joe Graham yeah. called me and asked for my input here, and I said, Well, the quote that I gave him as well as the quote that I suppose the sheriff gave him. Let him know the sheriff. But you know, I also think I don't, I don't agree with the way the husband was handled and how he was told his wife to die. Yeah, there's, we got a procedural problem there at the jail we need to talk about. Put yourself in a position to be prove up where you find out. You say, you know, you don't get it. It's like what's the lead, it's like what you. When you get that kind of information, I would, I would appreciate, I would ask that you let us be carry the weight of the information with you as members of the court. That's all I'm asking. Very well, very good. And if this is becoming an issue, we've got all these people wanting to sue us, and we need to find out what's going on. Yeah, I'm kidding. And see if we can change something. If we can change the site, specifically the policy, or what we want. And that's what I said. Because if we don't do this, in the eyes of a set of jurors over here, we have to try to do something about this, or to do an update, or whatever, then we won't say these people don't care. It's just like us on the business, and we don't have our insurance safety meetings regularly. If something happens and goes down, we got this here saying, you know what, this is what we've been doing. With regard to occurrences in the jail and things of that nature, the county sheriff has a full, complete 100% of the program. Okay? Right. We don't have anything to do with um, other than funding. Well, all of its policies. I, I've researched that, and we do stand the liability of the way the jail is operating. I know that we're restricted into how the sheriff runs his sheriff's department, but when it comes to the jail, uh, the sheriff has control of that jail. But we're but we're in charge of how he runs it. No, we're not. We're not. He's right there. That, that's that's the fine in the text. I will. I will. I will, I will, I will bring it. I, I mean, I'm sure the text observation is going to work. So I, I will disagree with you on that. I've done quite a bit of research on that. I'll show you. Everybody. That's that's fine. But we're not talking about that at the moment. We're talking about the fact that we just need to not be caught unaware of things happening in the county that result in these kind of activities directed towards us. As commissioners, I think we need to be informed. Okay. Right. And I think it's I think it's responsibility of the department heads. Myself, you, that rough, whoever, if their department something happens in their department, I think they should tell us and you know what's going on. It's an advice man caught out there, not knowing. The 
today. So that's all I had to say about that. I would just appreciate it. I would like to say that some of the discussion you need, you need to be very careful as to what is how the information is passed. You don't want to violate the Act, but there will be occasions where there will be allegations that have not been investigated or proven or disproven or anything else. And that's probably not the best thing to discuss in an open public meeting because if you have some real knowledge that some investigation uh, and some of those things it would be much better discussed with the attorney who is going to be representing the county uh, in case the lawsuit. Those discussions are entitled to be closed session rather than open session. And it's the same thing. Uh, so it's better to try to. Lawsuit is going to have one. They're trying to court this newspaper. And whatever is in the open session is probably going to be a newspaper. So, this is a word of caution as to what gets passed on, how it gets passed on, whether it's been some investigation or whatever. I will say um, that, that, you know, this is kind of a pre-investigated measure with regard to this um, Simpson. The possibility of the Simpson suit that has not been filed, and that has been turned over <coughs> to an attorney firm by TAC, Tech Association of Counties, that carries our liability, and they are pre-investigate that. There have been some. They have done some work on it. It's about all that they did ever say, I suppose, with regard to that. That has been filed. And the uh, lawsuit that is pending that has been filed. I sent the Anto versus the Sheriff of Hanyon County. Have been signed to a different Attorney firm investigate that. I can't make any comments about that because it has been signed to an attorney firm by the Texas Association of Counties. It's good. It's good. It's come to me and I'll let you know. Okay. Mark of mine. Injury that hasn't been filed either. But you're aware that there was an inmate that got a scuffle with another one, got their couple of uh, broken leg on broken leg. That was a female side jail. So we, uh, the young county's been out of, uh, don't say a big, a big amount, but they've been out of some. Regard to those medical expenses for the family. But that's all that's there. I appreciate getting right with you. Yeah. Need some more. I don't know what you got up there, but you almost have the power to get more right than I do. It's same together in that northwest corner, not the northeast corner. That's where you're not living right, are we? I have eight tents. Eight tents. Brand new games. First time I've ever had any money. Eight tents. You live right here. Is there anything that we want to consider with regard to the burn restrictions? Yeah. 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 Y